Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth, United Kingdom. And today we're going to show you an ANSYS analysis of the elastic buckling, the eigen buckling of a corrugated cylinder. So first we start with preferences. We click on structural. And we click on OK. And we click on Preprocessor, we've got element type, add, edit, delete. I'm going to add an element here, which is shell 93. So I'll go here and I'll find uh, the element. I'm using Antis 11. I could use shell 93, 8 node 93. Put that there. I'll say OK. And that's fine. And I close that. If I'm using ANSYS 13, I've got to use shell 281 and I put the thickness in a different way. So the first thing I do now is to pick on material properties, material models, structural, linear, elastic. Isotropic, and I'm putting in a value of 2e5, which is 2 times 10 to the fifth megapascal, which is the same as a newton per millimeter squared. I'm working in newton millimeters, and now I'm going to put in the Poisson ratio, which is 0 0.3. Okay, that. Come up here and exit this. Come there, and now I'm going to put the thickness in. So I pick on real constants. This is only for answers 11, answers 13 is different. Put on that. I've begun add, edit, delete. I've begun add. I've begun OK. And I'm going to put a thickness in there. The real constant number is 1. If I put 0 0.2 in there, it means 0 0.2 millimeters. It means the thickness is throughout 0 0.2 millimeters. I'll do that. Now if I'm using answers 13, I've got to use section, um, then I use shell, layup, add layup, and then I put the thickness in. So I've done that. Now I've got to do my modelling. So what I have to do first is to change the work plane from global Cartesian act to, to global cylindrical. And now I'm going to model. I'm going to create my nodes. on working plane in active CS. So the first one is node one and uh, I'm putting it in global cylindrical coordinates. So the next thing I put in is the radius of the uh, node. So it's 30 millimeters. And then I put in the angle that the, it lies at, which is minus 90, minus 90 degrees on the element and the Z direction, which is naught. That's fine for that. And I apply that, and then I put in node 2, which is um, 30, 30 millimeters radius, and the, the angle is minus 75 degrees, and the Z is zero. That's fine. I'm going to pick on node 3, and the radius is 30 degrees, the angle is minus 60 degrees. I'm drawing an element around in a 30 degree angle, minus 60 degrees and the Z is zero. I press that note, I then put in four, and the angle here, this is the middle of the element, the angle, the, sorry, not the angle, the radius is 33, the angle is minus 90, and the distance, the z direction, is two millimeters. That's fine. So I then uh, apply that. I pick on five, five, thirty-three is the radius. The angle 
but it's minus 60 degrees minus 60 degrees and the Z is 2 it's fine I then pick on 6 note 6 the angle the radius is 30 millimeters here the angle is minus 60 and the Z is 4 millimeters let's check that that's right, that's fine. So that I've done that right. So I pick on note seven. The radius is 30 millimeters. The angle is minus 75 and the Z is four, that's fine. And I'll pick on the last note of the element, which is note eight. And uh, the, the radius is 30 millimeters. The angle is minus 90 and the dead is 4, so I press apply. That's fine. I've got my 8 notes for my single element. I'm going to look at it at different, at different angles. I've plot controls, pan zoom, rotate. I put ISO start there. Let's move this ISO up, this uh, thing up there. Let me close that. And now I'm going to create my element. So I look for create elements, create elements, elements is there, I pick on that, and I pick on one, one is the first node, so I pick on that, elements, element attribute, all the number, all the numbers, two nodes, and I pick on, um, that's wrong there, two nodes, and I'll turn, move this here a bit. I'll pick on the first one, which is one. One's the first one. Three is the next one. Then it's six. Then it's eight. Then I'll go to the outside node and pick the mid side node. So pick on two first. Then I'll pick on five. Then I'll pick on seven. And then I'll pick on four. That's the eight nodes. I'll put apply. I've drawn my element there. That's fine. So uh, I've now got to rotate that element to 12 degrees. So I look for copy, look for modeling. Look for copy. Let's copy down here somewhere. Let's copy. We're going to copy. I click that. Sorry, copy. Elements. Beg your pardon. Copy elements. Auto numbered. Pick on that. And I'll pick on apply there. And there you are. The total number of copies I need is 12. The 1230s at 360 degrees and the node increment per element is 8 nodes. As you get each element, it increases by 8 nodes. And then the Y offset is 30 degrees. The 1230s at 360 degrees and I press apply. And there you are. I've got it. I've got my problem there, which is... Uh, which is uh, um, my corrugated cylinder. Um, I nef next have to uh, stick the join merge the members. So I pick on uh, I pick on modeling, and I pick on numbering controls. I merge items. I'm going to merge the items together. Apply. Then I compress the members. That's it. And the start hiccup, up, ladies and gentlemen. We'll carry on now. And I'm going to put my restraints on. So I pick on structural. Apply structural. 
displacement on nodes. And on the right, we'll make x, y, and z zero. Put a box it in there. I forgot to box it in there, ladies and gentlemen. We do that. And we'll make that x, y, and z zero. X, Y, and Z, zero. All degrees of freedom. Out, apply. And then I'm going to make mole zero. X, Y, and Z, theta, X, theta, Y, and theta, Z. Completely fixed on the left. Press apply. We put all degrees of freedom there. Get rid of that. We press OK. That's fine. I'm not going to put the pressure on. Put the pressure on nodes and we'll put box that in there box the whole lot in apply and I'm going to put minus one because this will work out <coughs> this will work out the geometrical stiffness matrices we're putting minus one the frequency I get which is the bucking pressure will be the actual bucking pressure so I've done that I'm not going to do the static analysis the analysis type new analysis static OK, and then I pick on analysis options, and I'm going to put the pre-stress on. This is the pre-stress here. Pre-stress has got to be on to work out the geometrical stiffness matrices. I'll do that. I can now run it. Solve current LS. So I've done it. It's done it. And now I've got to do the eigenbuckling. So, uh, um... And the eigenbuckling, so I pick on analysis type again, and I pick a new analysis, and I pick an eigenbuckling, I press OK, I press close, and then I pick on um, solution again, and analysis options, and I'm going to put six, six eigen modes. You only need one because it's buckling, and it'll do the lowest one. So I do that, OK that, and I'm going to solve it. I've got to solve current LS. Done it. Solution is done. I'll do the geometrical pre processor and I'll put read results summary. And there they are. It says frequency, but that's bucket pressure in megapascal, which is 7496.6 is the first one, the next one is 7502.9, all the others are higher. So the one we want is 7498.6. Uh, megapascals and uh, um, I can't plot an eigen mode here because I've restrained it all down here and restrained it there so I've only got one node going across like this so I can't do it but we put read results and we put first set we plot results and we put uh, deform shape deform shape and undeformed shape press OK and I get that so that's the end of my analysis. This is not much good for plastic buckling, for thick cylinders, it's not much good, it's all right for very thin cylinders, and the eigenbuckling is not much good for very thick cylinders. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.